Join me today as I paint this fun little painting, When Nature Calls. Hi, welcome to the Rock and Roll Painter Show. My name is J.D. Wayne and I am the Rock and Roll Painter. A few years ago when I got started in the world of art instruction, I did some demonstrations around town where I painted to music. And I soon discovered I could paint an entire painting in the framework of one song. So I put on the top hat, put on the sunglasses, and the Rock and Roll Painter was born. But in this environment here, there's some copyright issues regarding music, so we're just gonna show you how you can do a painting today. back to another episode of the Rock and Roll Painter. Today we have a little project called When Nature Calls. I think a lot of you can recognize that little shack that they used to be all over town but you don't see it much anymore. So what I did is I went and just found a picture of an old of an old outhouse and I transferred that picture onto the canvas with some carbon paper and then I take a little black gesso which is an acrylic under, underpainting. It dries very quickly and then with a little bit of regular masking tape, I tape over that just so we won't get any of the paint on to our outhouse. So watercolors have that advantage of using a product called, uh, called masking that covers up what they're not wanting to paint. So this painting is based on a painting by a friend and uh, mine and my mentor, Wilson Bickford. Um, I am a Wilson Bickford trained teacher and I get a lot of my inspiration, a lot of my ideals and techniques from him. And, and he had a painting called cabin at dusk and when I saw it it looked like an old hunting cabin and I thought somewhere in the back there had to be an old outhouse like this so that's what inspired this painting. So with that let's get going. So we have a uh, 16 by 20 canvas we have our little shack put on there and we have a thin coat of some white base medium. Let's get started we're going to start with some cadmium yellow a little bit of cadmium yellow this is going to be a sunrise painting so we want it nice and bright over here nice and bright. Pull up some of that nice bright yellow up into here. Next we'll go with some uh, yellow ochre. Some yellow ochre. This is a nice gold yellow kind of color. Pull that down over into here. Let those two colors kind of marry into each other. Pull some of that yellow up into here. Next we're going to go with some CAD cadmium red light. I like the real colorful sunrises and that's what we're going to see here. I know I said in another show one time I prefer sunsets or sunrises over sunsets. I think a sunset that's just one day that's over and gone is nothing but memory where a sunrise is full of hope and promise. So I prefer the sunrise. So we'll get some of that cad red light coming into here. Next some cad red deep. Cad red deep. You see all these, all these wonderful colors that we see in a sunrise. You can see a lot of these same colors in the sunset. So it all depends on how you look at this painting. It could be a sunrise, could be a sunset. It's all how you like to see it. Next, we'll go with some dioxazine purple. Some dioxazine purple. Really get this corner dark over here, nice and dark. Let some of that purple color. Fade out into the, my reds. Want that nice and dark over here, so I'm get a little bit more of that. Get it nice and dark. Just like let some of that color just kind of bleed over into the other colors. And now I like to take a big, big soft brush, just kind of lightly just set those colors right into the ground right into the sky, not into the ground. There's a nice colorful sunset, sunrise. Okay, now I'm gonna have some far off distant trees. I'm gonna take a fan brush and I'm gonna take some of my, some of my brown colors, some Van Dyke brown and some burnt sienna. And these just gonna be some far off trees. So you just gonna get the illusion of a tree back over here, but there won't be a lot of detail. They're just mainly gonna be silhouetted back here. It's kind of far off under the horizon. To help give the illusion of, 
have a little bit of a hill going off in the distance here. A little bit more of that color, maybe behind a little shack here, the little outhouse, the little primitive facility. Has some trees kind of fading off into the distance over there. Like I said, these are kind of far off, just kind of silhouetted there, just kind of silhouetted. Okay, let's put that up. I'm gonna pull off this tape here where my, where my ground is gonna be, where my horizon is, but I don't wanna pull that tape off my building yet. I need to get a, uh, I need to get some clear glazing medium onto this, onto this surface, just so my paints will move around a little easier. Just make a nice wet canvas. So the paints become more like a glaze then just get that wet. And we're gonna to need to see a little bit of grasses around this building because you wouldn't be able to paint the grasses toward the back. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of some sap green. I'm gonna put a little bit of this color back back where I won't be able to get to it after I pull the tape off the shack. So I just wanna get a little bit of color back there. A little bit of the grass colors. You can see the grass is kind of growing there. And we'll get a little bit of highlight back there while we're at it. A little bit of yellow ochre. And this uh, texture brush, we'll get a little bit of yellow ochre. Just give a little bit of highlight on that grassy area behind that shack. Now the fun part comes. We can go ahead and start working on this shack. Let me get a knife here. I don't have my knife. Step out of camera for a second. Need a knife to pull off my shack here. Get underneath this tape. Real good strong tape here. I'm amazed how strong that tape is, but like I said, it just keeps us from uh, getting paint from the sky into the into the buildings. We do that with barns, covered bridges, shacks, anything you want to keep the paint from being on it too soon. But you see, I just use ordinary. Ordinary masking tape, but I got the good kind, I guess, this time. And we do this in class. The reason we do this in class, because it helps, it really helps people not worry about whether or not they can create a nice shape. So this helps people keep the, the shapes in perspective and then just worry about getting some color on and make it look nice instead of having to, have to worry about the perspective of the building. That's some stubborn tape. All right. That's the hardest part of the whole thing, I guess, getting that tape off. Let me get my hands cleaned up. Now we need just a little bit more of the medium, some of that clear medium onto that building so we can slide some color around on it. Just a little bit of the glazing medium on there. Now I need to, I need to decide, I'm, I'm gonna mix some colors for that, yeah, but now yeah, I need to decide where my, um, Roof line is going to be so I know where to put the building. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to establish the top of this building real quick. There's some, some of the trim boards. Some of the trim boards coming down here. And the prospectus building is kind of sitting up on the hill almost, just a little bit, so you're kind of seeing, looking up at the building. But by doing that, that will help me to know where the boards are at. All right, now I'm going to mix just a little bit of color. Where my knife went. We'll just mix with our, we'll just mix with our rake brush. We've got a little rake brush here. I don't know how well the camera can see it, but there's a lot of little fine little hairs there, and they do a great job of making some of our, making some of our boards. So we get some white, some black, and a little bit of a cerulean blue to give us a, a bluish gray kind of color. And we need a little bit of, a little bit of thinner because you need this to really be thin to go so it'll slide all around and let. Slide around this shack. So first, let's get some of the darker boards on the on the side away from the light. We get some of that color onto this. Now, if we do this right with a nice light touch, we'll almost get the feeling of some boards growing here. Nice light touch. You almost see the texture of some boards. These are some gray, darker gray boards. They're out of the sun over here. Come all the way down. See this, this brush has a lot of little fine hairs on it, which helps you to create some of those barn boards or those old rustic boards. Get another row of them boards coming down here. 
And you can see the, see the wood grain almost because this brush is a fantastic brush. I really like the, the effect it does. So now I need a little bit of a lighter color, so I'm going to pull in a little white with that. Pull a little white, a little thinner again, just to get it nice and thin. Just a lighter color gray on this side because this kind of ended the light a little bit. A little lighter color gray will help give the illusion of a corner here. You really need to keep that thin, keep some paint under this brush. Come right down here. Looks like I'm not getting enough paint on there. You can see the paint coming right off. There we go. Get some, get some boards all the way down in front of this. Got a few rows of these to do. There, you see how you're getting some wood grain effect with that. That's what I like about that brush. Really gives the feel of old rustic boards. Come over here and down this side. You can see now it's really starting to look like an old shack. You don't see these old outhouses around town anymore. When I was a kid, there were still a few around town. My grandma's house had one. Just from days gone by. One time you see them anymore, like some old hunter shacks or something. There, that kind of gives us the, the illusion of some boards going there. Now I'm gonna go with just a little bit of black. Let me get a little bit of thinner. Just a little bit of a darker color. Kind of pull up from the bottom, they'll give the effect of like some old rotting boards that are kind of rotting up from the bottom. And even yet, let's clean that out. Let's get just a little bit of white just for a little bit of highlight on it. We'll get some white here. Just here and there, just a little bit of highlight on these boards. Just here and there, just to give a little color variation in the boards. There we go, I like the way that's looking. Clean that brush up. Now we need to get a, a little liner brush here. We need to create a little door for that. So with a little bit of thinner, a little bit of black, a little bit of the paint thinner, a little bit of black, roll that brush around, kind of create, there's a door right here, it comes over. Need to be a little black in there so that'll show up. Get right into that black. I think I contaminated my black a little bit when I was using the barn board. There we go. Come straight down. Get some more of that black. Just trying to get the illusion of a little door here. Get a little thinner yet. Get a little bit of a door there. You get a little bit of the black paint. Kind of make a little hinge here maybe. A little hinge and maybe a little handle. And in the old days, these outhouses, I, what I've read online, there was a crescent moon shape that some people say that meant it was a women's and a star shape was the men's, but I never went too many places where I saw two buildings. So the reason I think it was there, other things I've read is for ventilation and allow a little light in there. A lot of them old buildings didn't have any lights in there, didn't have any power. So that little moon, cut out moon shape, little crescent moon, give a little ventilation and a little light. So there we go. Now let's go back and get some more color down on the ground here. Well first let's get a, let's get my fan brush here. Let's get some brown. Let's create a path here up to this. We're going to have a path coming right down here. Place to get up to this old shack with a little bit of sienna and a little bit of white. A little sienna, a little bit of light, maybe just a little, little bit of highlight on that path. Just a little bit of highlight, just lighten up that path. Now we go back with our grass. So we go back with that texture brush, and just some straight sap green. We get some color all over here. And this will give texture for my highlight to show up too. So we just want to get some texture on there. Probably making some noise. You can hear that. Hear me pounding on that. I'm gonna come down about there because I'm gonna put a tree up over here. Nice big tree. Just wanna get some of that dark color on there, just so I have something for the highlight to stick to. Cover up, cover up the bottom of that old shack. I 
You want something that can, something for those highlights to stick to. Let's see over here. You want to see the top of there? See some of that grass sticking up over there? Let's go ahead and get some highlight on these before we before we get that tree. So a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of white. Really tap down, open that brush up. And nice and loose, you can see some old clumps of some old grass. Some old thick grass doesn't get mowed much around this old building. Get some highlight over here. We're gonna have a nice an old dead tree over here in a second. I just I want to save some room there. Let's let's go ahead and do that. Let me get a little flat brush. A little bit of black, just some straight black. And say we got an old dead tree kind of growing her right there. Okay, a couple, a couple little arms growing off him. I need to get a little smaller brush so I can really get, really get some nice limbs going off there. So I go with a liner brush, some thinner into my just into my straight black. Now I can get some nice limbs growing off there. These will be a little bit thinner, so it'll flow a little better. A little thinner, a little black. Yeah, that old that old dead tree's coming, showing up now. There we go. Just get some old limbs off of there. Just an old dead tree. Spent too much time next to the outhouse, so he's not alive anymore. Now just a little bit of. Just a little bit of white, maybe just a little bit of highlight on the side of that tree. Just a little bit of highlight will show up. I also need a little fence. I forgot to put a little fence in there. So we'll get just a liner brush, back some of that black. This fence will be kind of settled, silhouetted back here. We're have just kind of just going right up over that hill there, right over the hill. Put some boards on there. A little fence on the other side. Let's see what we got here. Fence post. There we go. Let that fence show up a little bit. All the way up there. Let's see what we got. I like the way that's looking out. We just need a little bit of highlight on some of the front of them boards just to distinguish that it's a little brighter. It's on this side. And that side's back off in the distance. And we probably would see, let me clean that brush up. Probably see the hint of a little bit of shingles up there. So I just get just a little bit of a dark color. And just kind of, just kind of make some lines. Just gives the hint of some old shingles. It's been a long time since they put any roof on this building. Some old shingles kind of looking a little weathered there. Just the hint of it. Just the hint of a little, de little detail like that. And give a little interest. And it might show up here just a little bit too. Just a little bit of interest in that shingle. Clean that side up. And now, my favorite thing to do to painting, it looks like we got everything we need in that painting. Let's see. If I line a brush and a little bit of color. Oh, we need some more of that grass down there. I'm not done yet. Getting it. Turn that grass into a parking lot there without any grass growing on it. Get some of that dark color down here again, some of the green for my highlight to be able to stick to. Go back into some of that yellow ochre. Kind of set that tree down on the ground. I'm gonna go just a little brighter right there. So I'm gonna go back into some, just some cad yellow, a little bit of white, get that brush to pop open, just a little bit more highlight. Right there. If I give a little bit of highlight right here, that'll almost give the illusion of a little shadow falling back behind it. There, that looks a lot better to me. Now I was, uh, I was ready to sign that painting. wasn't even done yet. Now I come over here and put my JDW. There we go. Let me just make sure my hands are clean before I pull this out of here. Like I say, I think a lot of people have some memories of these when they were young. Grandparents' house. Let's see how this looks in a in a frame. Let me let me take this off of here. Let that fall down. Let's come over and see what it looks like in frame. 
Okay, like I say, I always like to see a painting, finished painting into a frame. Really like the way things look and you can get it right up on the wall, be proud of what you've done. Okay, let's see what we got here. There we go. That's called When Nature Calls. This will be an upcoming class of mine. So if you'd like to know more about this or like to know more about classes, feel free to contact me at jdwayne at therockandrollpainter.com. Thanks for watching.